We're going to carry forward from chapter 3 into chapter 4 on multiple regression analysis. If you looked at what we were doing in chapter 3, predicting one y variable with one x, you probably thought to yourself, well, aren't there a lot more variables out there than just this one single one to predict with? That's what we're now going to learn about. So multiple regression will involve using more than one independent variable to predict a single dependent variable. Again, the independent variables are x's, and they're typically quantitative, but some may be qualitative. And then we'll use as many variables as we can possibly think of, but reduce the model to only the ones that have good predictive power. Sometimes we'll transform variables. We'll square them, multiply them together, or even take the log of the variable in order to get a model that fits the data better. Our example is going to be for Casey's Boot Company. I got this idea from the boot company called Tacovas. The owner of the boot company needs a model to predict upcoming sales. Casey believes that the price of the boot, the rating for the fit, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being best, the number of competing boot stores, a style rating on a scale of 1 to 25, and whether the customers consider the boots comfortable, we'll give a 1, or not, we'll get a 0. And we want to see if all these variables help predict sales for Casey's boots. We'll start with a correlation matrix. There are a few rules to know. The correlation matrix should not contain any qualitative variables or higher order terms. Those things we talked about, the square x or x1 times x2 or logs, will not go in correlation, only linear terms. So we'll leave out the comfort variable that was labeled 0 or 1. Here, I am looking at Y. I always tell my students to put a label out there by what you're predicting. So I'll put a Y by sales and then an X by all the rest. Same across the top. Put a Y by sales and an X by all the rest. We want X and Y to be highly correlated but we do not want the X's to be highly correlated. So looking at the correlation matrix, sales has a strong negative correlation with price. Sales has a moderately strong correlation that's positive with fit. It has a strong negative correlation with competition and a strong positive correlation with style. Then we'll look at the X's with each other. So as I look down price with fit will not be a problem. Price with competition may be. There's a moderately strong correlation between X of price and X of competition then price and style also seem to be moderately correlated. Fit and style, fit and comp, comp and style, comp and fit, comp and price, style and price again, style and fit, style and comp. So these are a repeat over here. Those are going to be problems possibly. So in our next slide, we'll run a command and jump to help us figure out what to keep and what to take out of the model. So here are the things I just went through. Again, sales and fit in very high, it's moderately high, but the rest have a high correlation with sales. Those are good, but the yellow ones are X with X. And these are things I'm not happy about seeing. 
So when we look at this slide, the term for two X's that are highly correlated is multicollinearity. We're going to look in the next slide how to detect what's bad multicollinearity that must be dealt with and what's not so bad. Severe multicollinearity can make the signs of the correlation coefficients appear opposite of what you would logically expect. For instance, we would expect the price of the boots to go up with the cost of materials. But if it had a negative sign, that would indicate I might have a problem. It can also give redundant information and one of the correlated X variables should be removed from the model if there's a severe problem with multicollinearity. Here's what we call the stepwise command or output. In order to get this output, I go through jump. I say analyze fit model, click on sales, drag it to the Y box, then all the other variables will go into the model effects as X's. Then I drop down the personality box and choose stepwise rather than regression. Then I have to click on this go button in order to make these check marks appear. If a variable is checked, then it's going to be included in the model and be a good predictor. The y-intercept is not a variable, but it is still part of our uh, equation. So now to read the step history, I have the very first row read left to right. In step one, it brings in price. Price is my single best predictor. If I only used it, R squared would be 68.58%. Then in combination with price, style comes in. R squared will go up every time I enter a variable. And so I continue entering all of the variables, even fit rating. But in step six, it says your best equation occurs when R squared is 0.872. So I back up to step four. That says stop when you, after you enter in competition. So I will be using price, style, comfort, competition, but I will reduce the model and not use fit rating. So this slide reiterates what we just went through. Whatever variable comes in step one is your single best predictor of Y. So that was price. Then in combination with price, it brings in style as the second best. And again, R squared will continue to rise with each new predictor, regardless of whether that predictor has significance or not. Then after all the variables are entered at the bottom, the best models presented and its corresponding R squared value. So we want to go back and rerun the model with only the predictors that are checked off within stepwise. When we run the model, we'll use analyze fit model. Again, click on the personality standard least squares and we'll set up a hypothesis to test the overall model. HO will say beta 1 equals beta 2 equals beta 3 equals beta 4 equals 0. I knew to use four betas because stepwise had said there were four good predictors. HA will say at least one of those betas is not 0. So here we're just determining is anything a good predictor, even though we know from stepwise that we did have four good ones. The test statistic is F under analysis of variance. Find the F ratio, 47.697. Its p-value is less than 0 0.0001. Therefore, we reject HO and at least one of those predictors is good. At this point, if we had not run stepwise, we would test the individual coefficients 
to see if they're significantly different from zero or not. I won't have you actually set up HO and HA for every single one. I'll simply have you look over at their p-values. So Price's p-value is in orange. That means that 0 0.0002 is less than 0 0.01. When the p-value or probability of t is in red, then that's saying it is less than alpha of 0 0.05. So all of these are in color, therefore all four, price, comp, style, and comfort, are good predictors. So here's our model. You look under parameter estimates. Always start with Y, tell me its variable name, sales, in this case, equals, then use the Y-intercept. 2,501.79. Then you have a negative coefficient for price. So you'll say minus 2.3 times price. You have another negative coefficient for competition. So minus 78.12 times competition plus 63.07 times style plus 124.54 times comfort. When we interpret those coefficients in the model, it's just like we did in Chapter 3, except we'll tag on holding all other variables constant. So as the price of a pair of boots increase by $1, the sales decrease by $2.3, holding all other variables constant. As the number of competing boot stores increase by 1, the sales decrease by $78.12, holding all other variables constant. As the style rating increases by 1, sales increase by 63.07, holding all other variables constant. We are going to avoid interpreting a qualitative variable in a model. And that's because it's called a dummy variable and it doesn't have a linear relationship. So I'm not going to say as X goes up by one, Y goes up or down by that coefficients amount. Instead, it's simply implied that if a pair of boots get a rating of one, meaning they're comfortable, sales will go up by 124.54. We just don't put it into that linear sentence form. I'm going to stop at that last slide and I'll start a new PowerPoint show at residual analysis. So go study multicollinearity and finding the model and interpreting that output.